This is the Open by OnePlus. It's their very first foldable, and I'm pretty sure this is my favorite phone of 2023. Let me tell you why. All right, so the hardware and the design of this thing are nice. It doesn't look or feel like a first gen product. It's pretty easy to forget that it technically is one. It's got good weight distribution and the way it's constructed works so well. It's sleek, it's got an aluminum frame with chamfered edges that add flair. Uh, the back of the Voyager black variant has this eco vegan leather finish. Kind of a perfect choice for a foldable in my opinion. It feels like a nice notebook. It hides fingerprints and smudges and it adds some grip which is always welcomed. When folded, there's little to no gap so it's both functionally and aesthetically pleasing. The alert slider is here, a OnePlus staple. Uh, the volume rocker is placed way too high up in my opinion, it's kind of annoying at first. Not the end of the world though. And the power button houses a fingerprint scanner, which works pretty well, it's fast and accurate, though understandably, there have been a decent amount of misreads, but I think that's mainly my fault, and I just need to nail that muscle memory so I can get the perfect read every time. Then there's this unbelievably massive camera module, you can't miss it. it it's there. There's also an IR blaster at the top here, which is surprising to say the least. Phones used to have these very commonly back in the day, and it was kind of sad to see them go. There actually was an instance where I had misplaced my TV remote, so I whipped out the phone and boom, I was controlling my TV with ease. It's nice to see this make a bit of a comeback. But yeah, the overall fit and finish is fantastic. It looks and feels very premium. So this outer display, it's a 6.31 inch, 120 hertz, 2K OLED panel with 10 bit color, Dolby Vision, it's got a ceramic guard, and a peak brightness of 2800 nits. The Pixel 8 Pro dropped like two weeks before the open, and it was already crushing competition with its 2400 nits peak brightness, and well, this just takes things to the next level. No real issues viewing the screen in sunlight. This is one of the best outer displays on a foldable, period. And another great thing is, it's usable. Not that the narrow display on the Z Fold is unusable or anything, but the Pixel Fold's outer what? But the Pixel Fold's outer display got high praise for being completely serviceable for full-on day-to-day usage. For all intents and purposes, having a cover display that shares roughly the same size and the same aspect ratio as most regular phones out there is very, very practical. Having said all of that, opening the phone presents the main attraction. The 7.82 inch, 120 hertz, 2K AMOLED panel with 10 bit color, Dolby Vision, ultra thin glass, and 2800 nits peak brightness. Not only does it have very satisfyingly thin and symmetrical bezels, but it has an extremely minimal crease down the middle. It's subtle. It's there, you can see it, but in practice it's barely noticeable both visually and when you're simply using the phone. Just like the outer display, this one is outstanding. It's sharp, it's detailed and colorful, it's been awesome for games, watching YouTube videos. I watched six episodes out of an eight episode season of a TV show on here, no problem. Content looks great, and all in all, it's just nice to look at and use. This is complemented quite well by the solid feeling hinge, it's got a satisfying open and close, by the haptic feedback, it's strong and crisp and utilized well throughout the OS, though I've heard from some users that the haptic feedback is lackluster. Not too sure if this is a preference thing or a unit to unit thing, but in my experience it's been good. And by the speakers. There's a quad speaker setup here and it's great for media consumption. I do wish they sounded a little more crisp, I wish the mids sounded warmer, and I wish there was more low end, but that's nitpicking on my part, don't worry, they sound good. The user experience as a whole, while not perfect by any means, is still incredibly enjoyable and I think the kicker is how well thought out certain things are. And I'm mainly talking about multitasking. Now of course you've got your usual Oxygen OS customizations and features baked in. There's a good handful of fun and useful things in here, like the option to pick up from right where you left off when you close the phone to then resume on the outer display. It's very smart. I really like the gestures for screenshots, I think they're creative, but it's the multitasking that shines. OnePlus calls this open canvas, and it basically allows you to open and place up to three apps side by side to be used simultaneously. So yes, if you wanted to use Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok all at the same time, you can do that and it is so feasible it's frightening. You can do a two finger, finger, fingle? <laughs> you can do a two finger swipe down to get this started. Do a four finger pinch gesture and you can view them fully. You can expand windows to be closer to full screen size, which is what I find myself doing. I like two apps up top and the expanded one on the bottom, but you can handle these any way you want. You can expand all three windows. You can reposition them. You can quickly swap them with different applications. And you can save that set of open apps as a group with a shortcut to it placed on your home screen, which is pretty sick. You can even toss another app into a floating window for more multitasking. 
And yes, you can run three games at the same time, and yes, I was blown away by how easily and smoothly it does so, and yes, the phone will get super hot, and no, I don't think it's super practical, and yes, I do still think it's awesome. That's what's so impressive to me about this whole thing is how seamless it is and how fluid the process is. And not just the split screen stuff, but everyday performance and the bouncing from app to app form of multitasking too, which by the way, is super easy with this dock. You can place up to four apps of your choosing on here and you can enable shortcuts to the app drawer, recent files, as well as recent and suggested apps. You can also easily hide the dock when you're in an app, which is handy. Every once in a while, I come across a few bugs and visual glitches. Some widgets struggle to automatically resize when switching between displays, but the UX has improved with updates and I'm sure it'll continue to get better over time. The open is slated to get four years of OS updates and five years of security patches. Like shortly after launch, there was a pretty substantial update pushed out that polished a good number of things, including improving the stability and expanding the compatibility of Bluetooth connections so as to maximize functionality with accessories like Bluetooth earbuds, like these ones. These are the Voyager Free 60 Plus UC Bluetooth earbuds from Poly, and what's special about these are their all-around performance with features you don't see every day. For one thing, they come with a charging case that has a touchscreen. It's crazy. With this, you can check battery levels for both the earbuds and the case itself. You can manage Bluetooth connections where you're able to connect to two devices simultaneously. The case will actually remember up to eight devices. You can control media and volume, and you can toggle between the different ANC and transparency modes the earbuds have, which work great by the way. I can lock in and focus on what I'm doing, shutting out all the distractions around me, and when I need to, I can let in the sound around me without needing to remove an earbud. This is especially useful for when people are trying to talk to me. There are three mics per earbud and paired with wind smart technology. This helps reduce wind noise when you're on calls while outside. The case is Qi wireless charging enabled, and in addition to that, you can connect the case to an in-flight entertainment system via the included 3.5mm cable so that you can use the earbuds wirelessly, of course, with that system. They sound great, I especially love the bass they push out, it's deep and crisp without sounding muddy, and the UC model is built for seamless use with major UC platforms, and the Microsoft Teams certified version actually includes a button for quick access to the app and more. Check them out and grab a pair using the link in the description and a huge thanks to Polly for sponsoring this portion of today's video. So I'm pretty certain that with all of that power user stuff being possible, there should be no doubting this phone's performance in general. The Open is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, a great SoC as we know, and paired with that is 16 gigs of RAM. And that's the only variant they sell, no 8 or 12 gigabyte model, just 16 gigs of RAM with 512 gigabytes of UFS 4.0 storage. But it makes sense. With this type of device, you'd want as much RAM as possible for obvious reasons, which then makes average everyday phone use that much better. Now that leads me to battery life, and with this I don't really have any complaints. It's got a 4,805 milliamp hour battery and it gets me through the day no problem. Obviously, with wildly heavy use, I'll be plugging the phone in before bedtime, but in my experience with mixed usage, I can easily get a full day on a single charge around seven to eight hours of screen on time, and with light use, I can stretch the battery to a day and a half. Shout out to that 8 Gen 2. Now, there's no wireless charging here, and I know a lot of people were upset by that. Understandably so. I mean, that is something I would have liked as well, and it's a bummer that it's not here. But I always say that if wireless charging isn't present, which it just should be nowadays, it wouldn't really cost them anything, at least implement fast wired charging. And we get that here. It's got 67 watt wired charging, which is good for a 0 to 100% charge in just under 45 minutes, which I will gladly take. That's less than half the time it takes to charge the Pixel 8 Pro, and it's about 27% faster than the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Oh, and a big shout out to OnePlus for including a wall adapter in the box, and it's the one that you actually need to achieve those quick charging speeds. They also included this basic case. It's not the most high quality one, but hey, the fact that they included one is a plus in my book, and it'll get the job done for starters. Let's address one of the elephants in the room real quick. You can't ignore it, no matter how hard you may try. This camera module is gargantuan. It's taking me a while to adjust to it, to be completely honest with you, especially when it comes to holding and using the phone while it's folded. This camera bump takes up the entire upper half of the phone, and I guess based on how I normally hold a phone, my index finger rests right on top of where the module is placed. So it was kind of uncomfortable at first, not gonna lie, and honestly, I'm still not exactly used to it yet, but I'm getting there. Now this ginormous, supersized turbo camera module means the cameras have to be good then, right? Right? 
Yeah, they're good. Great even. They're the best cameras on a foldable at the moment. Can you imagine if they were anything less and you had to deal with this double stack of a flying saucer strapped to the back of your phone? <laughs> to me, these cameras are excellent considering they're in a foldable. Now, I've admittedly been a hermit during my review period, so I didn't get out that much to take photos, but from what I did get, I got more than enough to genuinely impress me. Now, I got a couple of shots at 6x zoom and I didn't expect them to look so good. Optical zoom goes up to 3x, I believe. Uh, these shots are very solid too but these 6X shots are good as well. I'm looking forward to traveling with the open where I'll test the cameras more fully. Uh, they're obviously not perfect, but I am pleased with what they crank out and they can even record video in Dolby Vision HDR. These aren't going to beat out the likes of Apple, Samsung, and Google. And while there's certainly room for improvement, these cameras can absolutely hold their own. The app is great too, it boasts a solid selection of modes as always, and it's well laid out and organized. I think OnePlus did a very good job with the 11's cameras, so their output for 2023 in this area gets a thumbs up from me. By now, there are plenty of phones that do this. Foldables are long removed from being concepts, they're here but there's still a long way to go before they get to the point so many of us are waiting for. With foldables, you get more moving parts, so automatically that adds concern for the phone's durability and longevity. The Open is IPX4 certified, which is labeled as splash resistant. By contrast, the Z Fold 5 is IPX8 certified, which is good enough for near five feet submersion in water for 30 minutes, so there's that. OnePlus claims this, what they call ultra efficient flexion hinge design built with carbon fiber, titanium alloy, cobalt molybdenum alloy, aerospace materials, is good enough for up to 100 folds per day for 10 years. That's, that's a lot of folding. But all this tech and all of the tests behind it, while appreciated, can only prove so much. I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't concerned about the inner display. There's been a little bit of paranoia during my review period. I have been babying this phone and I've been purposefully avoiding unnecessary contact with the crease. There have already been a small handful of reports on significant display issues, mostly centered around the inner display and the crease, and I can't help but occasionally figuratively hold my breath while opening the display in hopes that it's still pristine. Now, I haven't had any issues so far, but I have noticed the hinge, the hin the hinge, <laughs> the hinges snap open has gotten a little less intense. It's still strong, but it is different now. And from the jump, I noticed a slight crackling sound when opening the device. OnePlus did say to expect this, it's normal, so I haven't been too worried about it. OnePlus, in a way, has had their foot in the door with Foldable's experience through their sister company Oppo, but this design here is actually unique and original to OnePlus. So instead of the OnePlus Open being an Oppo Find N3, it's the other way around. Again, it's easy to forget that this is technically a first-gen product, so noteworthy issues are inevitable. That's not to excuse anything. We obviously expect OnePlus to adjust and improve where necessary, just like everyone else. And a super important element is how OnePlus handles these issues some buyers are having. How do they help out? How do they fix? How do they compensate? Things like that. Again, with moving parts comes additional challenges for ensuring rigidity and elemental resistance. Either way, none of that has prevented this phone from becoming my favorite for 2023. Despite what it lacks and some of the long-term hardware concerns, it's such a nice, refreshing break from regular slab phones, and it's been so fun to use. It checks pretty much every major box. The software does a great job handling things like multitasking. It is a power user's playground. It's great for gaming and media consumption. It's got good cameras and battery life. The displays are awesome, and it is crazy powerful. It's packed with a lot of high-end tech, and at $1,700, that's a pretty good price, relatively speaking, of course. That is still an absurd amount to drop on a phone, but that undercuts the Z Fold and the Pixel Fold, two of the top foldables out at the moment. As of the posting of this video, OnePlus still has their promos going on where you can trade in any phone to get $200 off. And in addition to that, you can get up to $1,000 off by trading in another more recent high-end smartphone. I believe the iPhone 14 Pro Max, for example, fits the bill. I'll admit, I've not used many foldables, so while this is the best one that I've used, I can't say it's the best one, period. I feel that's debatable at the moment. 
But this is a phone I can recommend to people who are looking to try something different, something new, albeit with proper warnings in place, of course. But I am without question looking forward to what OnePlus does with future iterations. Phew, if you made it to this point of the video, you are awesome and I appreciate you. Go ahead and drop a diamond emoji and a potato if you're part of the potato gang. Let me know what you think of the OnePlus Open and the current state of foldables and let's talk about it. It's been Zach and thank you so much for watching. <laughs>